Hello again and welcome to the 140k Imperial Guard After Action Report. Today's After Action Report is going to be uh, linked to the 2000 point battle report I had with my Armageddon Steel Legion versus the Imperial Knights and Adeptus Mechanicus forces. Uh, if you haven't seen that battle report already, go ahead and watch it because obviously this video is going to be talking about what happens and there's going to be some spoilers in there. So, First off, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Matt for coming down and uh, playing the game against me. Um, didn't want to embarrass Matt too much, you know. He is I play with him uh, fairly regularly, and he, you know, he's sort of the head of the club that I I play at, and he is one of the, you know, not I don't want to embarrass him any further. So sorry, Matt, if you do do watch, don't embarrass him. But he is he is one of the best players that I know, hands down. He's probably the best player at the club, without any doubt. Uh, in my mind, like I said in the video, he's captain Team Wales for a number of years. He's now on Team England, which is a big deal. Team England take their 40k very seriously. Um, and uh, but the same, he's, you know, he's, he's not a whacker. He's, he's just a really nice guy. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Matt, for the for the game. Absolutely appreciate you coming down and stomping me. Now, some of you might think that's a bit weird, but I, I actually, when I was sort of arranging this with Matt, I said I want you to bring something hard. Okay, I want you to bring something hard. I don't mind if I lose the game. Okay, I'm going to bring a good list. I'm not going to throw the game, obviously. I'm going to bring a good list. But I want you to bring something that is on the cutting edge. The, one of these top tier lists. Because there's loads of um, bat people that do battle reports out there. There are loads of people that do battle reports out there. But there is not too many. There are, they do exist, but there's not too many which show top tier tournament it's even the people that i reckon do the best battle reports out there at the moment people like tabletop tactics they often especially on their free view they often tone them down a little bit um which is great you obviously want to appeal to that the, the larger more casual audience that's fine but i obviously i've built my channel around trying to have good guard tactics tournament winning ta uh, guard tactics so I wanted Matt to come down and show you guys a list which if you go to a tournament and you're doing quite well, you're probably going to face. Even if you're not doing quite well, this is the kind of list you're going to come across. You're going Any tournament you go to, I guarantee it, you will face Imperial Knights no matter what. If you're in bottom tables, middle tables, top tables, you will face Imperial Knights. More likely than not, you will face a list very similar to what Matt brought today. And it's also very good because this battle report, I'm trying to get it out. You know, it's, it's only a couple of weeks after the latest FAQ. Um, and, you know, this is this is a good show of how the meta is going to shift. Because obviously you've got to give it a few weeks to let the meta settle down after a, after a, a big change like like the big FAQs and the chapter approves and, and that. And this this is where it's settled. No longer will you see... You sort of Castellans or double Castellans and, and maybe one or two smaller knights. Now it's all about the four medium knights. That's what it's about. Castellans, they're not dead. They're still very good. But in a in a top tier tournament list where every unit must be as point sufficient as possible, Castellans are now no longer as point sufficient. And so therefore, while still very powerful and they will do very well, they are not as point efficient as running multiple smaller knights. Four smaller knights are now better. Remember at the beginning of eighth edition when you could only afford three uh, medium-sized knights. Now you can afford four. That's how the meta. That's how some knights have gone down. Some knights have gone up. That's how the meta has, has settled at the moment. So that is what you can expect to face. You will expect to face um, endless fury. It's pretty much a guaranteed. You're gonna. That's the uh, Gatling relic that you uh, Gatling relic you're gonna face. You're more than likely now. Because you're not going to see Call's Wrath, because Castellans are going to be less popular. You're going to see things like uh, Fury of Mars, which is the better thermal cannon. In fact, uh, Rapid Fire Battle Cannon and Gatling Cannon is actually... It originally, that's what it always used to be about, take those two. Uh, as you saw in that game, you actually want to have some thermal cannons in there. Thermal cannons are very good. Very good, guys. So you want to consider your thermal cannons. Um, and yes, and of course, you need those command points. But guess what? Regular baby knights aren't. Uh, well, I said they're not baby knights. Just regular knights are 
not as CP intensive as Castellans. So they, so that's obviously very important, isn't it? Because it means you can rotate iron shields all the time, and you've got way, you know, your loyal, your loyal thirty-two, rusty seventeen, additional command point battery goes a lot further. Goes a lot further. Now we've talked about sort of uh, sort of Matt's list. Obviously, I was running my steel legion list. Now, what I think's really good about the battle is it shows something that I've been talking about for a while. It shows a couple of weaknesses in what are considered by many to be the superior Lehman Russ options, the Conqueror and the Executioner. Now, and this is something that I've experienced in multiple battles now, and it's starting to make me come away from the Executioner. Significantly. Um, most games that I play now with the Executioner, the fact it only has a 36 inch range, is really starting to become a problem. Um, and, and as you saw in that, Matt was very easily able to deploy outside of my, th uh, not out of the range of the gun, but out of grinding advanced range, which hurt. And again, the Conquerors are great with their, you know, get within 24, get to reroll all the hits, but I think that only came up once. If it, yeah, it didn't come up very often, not very often at all. So that was, uh... It does show weaknesses. It does it does make me start leaning back towards the good old battle cannon. Old reliable. Seventy two inch range could could be better. Thirty six inch range is weirdly in forty K, not often long enough range. Not for the big but not when the big boys are duking it out. Not when the big boys are duking it out. Uh second thing I wanted to mention is a big mistake that I made. Big mistake, I think it could have swung the game way more in my favour if I hadn't made that mistake, which was, I used my old grudges trait on the wrong night. I'm sure many of you will have pointed that out by now. I shouldn't have used it on the Gallant. I was a little paranoid about the Gallant. I've had one of those things get in amongst my lines before. I guess it's kind of a catch-22. You know, the fact that the uh, the gal if, I, if I don't shoot the Gallant, it's going to get in amongst my lines and start wrecking tanks, but I can feed it Chimeras relatively easily. Whereas, I should have put my old grudges on either his Warlord Knight or the one with the Fury of Mars cannon. Or, you know, whichever one, of the, either the Endless Fury or Fury of, Mar um, Fury of Mars uh, relics. I should have done that. Because, in hindsight, the Gallant could have, like I said, could have been fed a few units. Those things just went to town on me and I wasn't a once I'd lost a much of my heavy support uh I wasn't able to to come back. And admittedly, and even Matt said it, he got a little lucky killing three Liam Russes in one go is unusual. Typically he'd kill two. Typically. So that was a bit un unlucky on my side. Uh, well, lucky on his side. I made a poor tactical decision. Yep, you've got to be got to be aware of those things. So if I was playing that list again, I think I'd, I'd have a slightly better chance. Um, and again, you know, I was I shouldn't have been so paranoid about his knights. Like I gunlined too much, and my Steel Legion are not a gunlining army. They're meant to be mobile. They're meant to be. Um, much more maneuverable. I should have been driving round and lone wolf and going for his easy kills and stuff like that. I should have been doing that kind of stuff. Ah, but you know these things happen. It's been a while. Like I said, it's been a while since I have faced multiple smaller knights. Normally, there's just the one bigger stellar, and it's an obvious target. You can kill it. Um, one thing I do want to mention is Yarrick. I think in terms of things that worked well, Yarrick worked fantastically. He made such a difference. Uh, obviously, you saw how you know the rerolling ones is is a huge is a huge buff, huge buff, totally worth it. Uh, you know, and in most games, I would consider take. I'm going to consider taking Yarrick in pretty much all my lists going forward. That's how impressed I was with him for two, three reasons. Three reasons. One, if I was to run him in my more traditional pure infantry list, I would take him and I would give him. I would make him Warlord, which meant that he um, would get his Master of Command trait, so he could issue an order, which is fantastic. He wasn't Warlord in this in the game, sorry. 
Uh, but that gives me an extra order, which I'm always looking for more orders in my infantry army. Two, the reroll ones buff is very nice to have. But three, Yarrick is very... Yarrick protects you from giving up Warlord. How, you know, any other character that had been in combat with a knight for three rounds of combat would have died. Yarrick survived three rounds of combat, two or three rounds of combat versus an Imperial Knight. And in the process took off a few wounds from it as well. Not bad at all. So very impressive Yarrick. Um, the last kind of Sentinels were nice. I, for, for a while, not on the channel obviously, but I've been trying them out with missile launchers. And missile launchers are good. Because I'm often facing hordes and I'm like, I kind of need the D6 bolter shots. But, uh, you know, from the flak missile, frag missile. But I think I'm going to go back to Laz Cannons. They're just that, they've got that bit of punch. They make them that bit more threatening. Um, and that's kind of it, really, guys. Uh, I'm sure there's lots more I, I could analyse. But I want to keep it relatively brief. Um, yeah, if I was to play that list, I, I'm very glad I played that list because now I'm more prepared for it. Um, oh, one last thing I do want to highlight. That was it. Sorry, before I forget. One last thing I do want to highlight. I thought the battle showed a really key difference between top tier lists and medium tier lists. Okay? And a huge weakness with Imperial Guard in general. Which was, when the Knights lost a Knight... It could have been any knight. It didn't really matter. Their ability to deal with the situation basically didn't diminish. Because knights can do everything. Knights can shoot well. Knights can combat well. Knights are pretty manoeuvrable. Knights can do everything. Which is why they're so competitive. The problem with the Imperial Guard is we rely upon combined arms. Which means our army is relatively segmented. Our infantry are not really designed for killing big things. They're good at winning against other infantry and taking objectives. And our heavy support is what we rely upon to kill our enemy's heavy support. And what you saw in that battle very clearly was what happens when your opponent has good target priority. Matt knew that if he got rid of all my big guns, then the Chimeras were essentially useless. And the infantry inside would struggle. And that's exactly what happened. He took out my Lehman Russes. And that was, that was that. You know, when those three Lehman Russes died, you could almost say the game was over. And that shows, and that shows a real weakness with Imperial Guard, which is why I'm really sad that Games Workshop, every friggin' FAQ, nerfs them. Because we're, we are very easy to... Good players find us easy to counter. And match play is about taking competitive armies against each other. And so... You, should, you shouldn't keep nerfing something that is strong in matched play. Does that make sense? You know, if you're saying that narrative play is for power level and matched play is for, for competitive armies, then it's okay for those almost hardcore armies to exist. You obviously want a bit of balance and a bit of nerfing, but don't do it too much. You know, a narrative play is where you want people to be sort of having fun and all that kind of stuff. It, it's kind of reverse logic, but you know what I mean? So it does show that you can, if you've got good target priority, you can very much cut apart guard competitive list quite easily. And guard don't really have units that can do everything. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.